So a little while ago we talked about writing bass lines, and what we said there primarily was that whatever your chords are, say it was C, A minor, F, you will want to make the bass play the root notes of those chords, meaning C, A, and F. That is still the case and will always be the case. There are other options though, and we're going to talk about that today, in terms of what other notes can we play in the bass except for the root note. It's good to play the root note maybe first or at some point you'll want to hit the root note unless you really know what you're doing. But there are other notes in between those root notes that we can play that make the bass line more interesting. So I want to take a look at that briefly. What I've got here is a very simple kick pattern of just kick drum right on the beat. And then I've got some chords here. It sounds like this. These chords are a minor, G, F, G. So that's A minor, G major, F major, and G major. If you want, you can pause the video and you can look at these and see what notes are there. I'm going to say them, but you can just believe me as well. What I've got here is a root note on each one, A, G, F, G. And then I've got the three notes that make up that chord up here. So in this case, in A, that means it's E, A, and C. Like if you went and you try to figure out what notes are in A minor, you'd find out it's A, C, and E. And I've got those notes here. I've got an E, a C, an A, and I've got an A bass note in my chords. Not really a bass note, but the lowest note in the chord is the root note. I've got that for each. So this is A, C, and E. This is G, B, and D in the G major chord, and F, A, and C. Why I'm saying this is that if you want to start adding in other tones, it can be helpful to understand what notes are in your chord. Now you can write other tones in your bass lines just by ear and that's perfectly fine to do. But I also want to talk about um, this approach as well so that you have, it can give you some more ideas anyway about what notes are going to work for sure. So I've got a bass line here now, let's listen to it first. In case that's hard for you to hear, I'm going to mute the chords. So the question is, what are these other notes that are in here? There's more than just root notes. So if we recall on the uh, first chord is an A minor. A, C, and E are those notes in that chord. What I'm going to say here is that we can use the notes from the chord not just the root note, but also the third and the fifth from the chord. And we can use those in our bass lines over the chords that they represent. So in the first chord is A minor, A, C, and E. I can use A, I can use C, and I can use E. And they will all work very well underneath those chords that are being played. That being said, I do start every chord with its root note because that is like the strongest sound and will reinforce the chord when you hear that root note hit first. That's not essential. You don't have to do that, but it's very, very common. And it's common for a reason because it sounds good. So I've got an A first. This short little note is an E. And then it goes to the octave of A. So I hit the root note. I hit the fifth of the chord. And then I hit the root note again, but an octave higher like that, back to the fifth here. So that's A, E, A, E. If you were to look at that A minor chord on your keyboard, you would see an A, C, and an E, and realize, ah, so I can hit A, E, go up to the next A, back down to E, and back to E again. It's most common in bass lines to use the first and the fifth. If you don't recall what that means, you might want to go back and look at those chord videos. We're going to talk about that a little bit more again in the future, but Remember, we have three notes that make up a triad. And we had these formulas that we learned, right? Plus three, plus four, and plus four, plus three. But what I also said was that those notes represent the first, third, and fifth note of a scale when you do that. So when I say the root note and the fifth, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the root note and the fifth, which would be like the first note of a chord and the third note of a chord. So those two notes are the most common to be used in, in bass lines, the root and the fifth. But we use the third as well as we'll see here in a second. Right here. So here we got a G chord. Again, I hit G on the first hit to emphasize the chord. Then I hit its fifth, which is D. The, the notes in G major are G, B, and D. 
So I went G to D, up to G again, emulating the first one, and then here on G. So it has like a pattern. But now I'm, I'm going down the notes of the chord. So I have D, then I have B, then I have G. So the notes of G major are G, B, and D, and my bass line is going G up to D, up to the high G, and then it's descending D, B, G, into the next chord, which is F. So that's where I got all those notes from. They are the notes of the chord. Same thing here. So in the F, I've repeated the exact same pattern that I did in the A, except now it's on the root note F. So that's its root, its fifth, which is C, up to the root an octave higher, down to the fifth again, which is C. And then we're going back to G for the last chord, which repeats this pattern. So I have kind of this one pattern, second pattern, one pattern, second pattern. So if we listen to the whole thing again, here's the first pattern on A, different pattern on G, same as the first, but on F now, back to the G pattern. with the chords. Notice that the bass notes all work perfectly with this. If I just used some random notes, especially if they weren't from the scale, it would sound crazy and wouldn't sound very nice. It's possible to do all this just by ear without thinking about it. However, sometimes it's helpful to know if you're just trying to figure out something, what notes could I use here? Oh, you can use the notes of the chord that's being played. So whatever chord is being played at that time, the notes that make up that chord, you can use in your bass line as notes to go between or change with or whatever and make your bass line more interesting. So I have another example over here, which is the same chord progression and the same kick pattern, but a new bass line. Let's check this out. So what's going on here is it's the same chord. So this is A minor. I hit the A root note, going up an octave to the A, and then I'm going even up higher than that to the third of the chord. So that's A to A to C. Remember, A minor is A, C, and E. C is inside the chord. It's one of the notes of the chord. So I'm hitting it up here, going between A, C, A. Now I'm hitting G, which is the root note of the next chord and doing G up to G, an octave, then up to its fifth, which is D, and back down to the G again. What's interesting here is that even though the chords are going down, A, G, F, the top note in the bass line is going up. So if you listen here, the top note is C. Ah, uh, sorry, wrong one, this one. Then D. And the top note of each one is a note from the chord. So here I went the root up to the octave of the root, third back down. Here I went the root up to the octave, fifth of that, which is actually higher than the previous one here, back down to the root. Here I'm doing the root again of F in this case. And then this time I'm not going to the octave, I'm going from the root up to the third of the chord. In F we have F, A, and C. So I'm going from F up an octave all the way to A, and then again up to the root, which is F, and down to the C, which is part of the chord, F, A, and C. So I've got the root note, the third, the root note even higher, two octaves higher than, than this one, and then down to the fifth. What that allows me to do is have this top note of every chord, of uh, every chord in the bass line, rising up. So from the start of this part again, And here I've got G is the last chord again, G up to B, which is its third, but an octave higher, D, which is its fifth, back to B, which is its third, and G, which is its root. So the only notes I'm hitting in this are the, the tones in the chords themselves. So I'm just taking the chord and then kind of spreading it out across the bass line, always starting the bass line on the root so it has that strong feeling, and then the motion between the other, the changing notes in the other part, are just the other notes of the chord. And I'm just thinking of interesting ways to arrange them. So here I had the idea of the top note of each section getting higher and then coming down again. 
So the top note of this section is the third of the chord, fifth of this chord, the root note of this chord, back to the fifth of this chord. If this is all a little bit too complicated for you right now, that's totally fine. It's worth it to start thinking about this uh, because there's a lot of possibilities that you can do with this. If you want to just stick with using root notes for now, that's totally fine too. But I do encourage you to start thinking about using the notes in your chords in your bass lines. So in order to do that, you have to know what chords you're playing, right? You can't just play some random stuff. That could be fine too. But you can make more effective use if you know, right, I played A minor, G, and F. If you need to, write them down. A minor has A, C, and E. G has whatever your chords have. Just write down the notes. And then you know you can use those notes in your bass line in some kind of creative way. So I've called this session Intermediate Bass. And I'll make it available to uh, download under this video. So you can go in and look at this if you want and see what's going on. Um, but yeah. So this is, there's, there's more, of course, to bass lines than this even, being this is intermediate, there's advanced, then there's even some kind of super advanced bass lines, which we're probably not going to get into. But this is enough for now to start experimenting more. In the next videos, we're going to start talking about building a new beat, and we're going to use uh, our orchestration ideas of what instruments to use, and we're going to try to use these new bass line ideas to create something that has some more interest than we had before.